welcome to my channel. If you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Freeport McMoran's stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Become a member and support the channel for 99 cents a month. Get a more in-depth valuation for $9.99 or $49.99. The highest level is $99 for a private Zoom session. See the link in the very top of the description. Freeport is a gold and copper mining company located in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's get started with the model. This is a big company, 23.7 billion market cap. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. They're trading at 16.32 a share and they have 1.5 billion shares outstanding. To get shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And if a company has positive free cash flow, they can pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other companies, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things. And if a company has positive free cash flow, that means it's generating more cash than it's spending. This company has positive free cash flow in three to four years. 2019 looks like it was a bad year for them. They had a negative 1.2 billion of free cash flow. They also had negative net income that year. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. So this company has negative net income in two of the four years. So it doesn't look so great looking at their financials. The reason they had such a big negative in 2016 because they had a four and a half billion dollar asset impairment. Goodwill is an asset on the balance sheet. Goodwill comes about from when you acquire a company. If you acquire another company at a premium, the additional amount you paid in excess to what it's worth will go into Goodwill. The value of a company is the assets minus liabilities on a balance sheet. Say for example, you acquired a company and you paid 1.5 billion, but according to the balance sheet it was worth 1 billion because they had assets of 3 billion and liabilities of 2 billion, so they were worth 1 billion. That means you have to book 500 million dollars onto your balance sheet as goodwill. Every year you have to test for goodwill impairment. But if a year from now you looked at the company you acquired and you should have paid 1.4 billion, not 1.5 billion, that means you have to take 100 million off of the balance sheet, off of goodwill, and book it onto the income statement as an expense. So it's going to bring down your net income, but it's a non-cash item because the cash happened years ago when you acquired the company. That's why the company has positive free cash flow that year because the four and a half billion dollar expense they booked for goodwill impairment didn't affect free cash flow. Let's look at the revenue. Revenue looks pretty steady. It's not really moving. It does jump up from 2016 to 2018 but comes right back down in 2019. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 9.9 .9 billion dollars of debt, 9.3 billion dollars of equity. The interest rate they pay in their debt is 6.28% and the cost of debt is 4.68%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 51% of debt in their capital structure, which means they have 49% equity. The cost of equity is 20%, and we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. Part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a really high beta, 2.31, so the stock moves more than two times the market, so it's a pretty volatile stock. The higher the beta, the higher cost of equity. And their WAC is 12.14%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And the WAC is a discount rate companies use when they want to take on new projects. So say for example, Freeport had a project that cost $1 million up front, but they would receive $100,000 of cash flows from that project over the next 20 years. What they would do is they would discount those future 20 years of cash flows back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And if the future cash flows were worth 1.5 million in today's dollars, they would take on the project because they would be paying 1 million for it and they'd be making $500,000. But if they discounted the 20 years of future cash flows back to today and it was $800,000, they wouldn't take on a project because they'd be losing $200,000. And you only want to take on projects that add value to the company. The WAC is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows for this model. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. 
We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 25.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weight average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $22.6 billion. We divide that by 1.5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1556. They're trading at 1632, so they're trading at a 5% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 4901, so they're saying the stock is really undervalued. Their valuation is based off of the average analyst estimate. See, it's really hard to value companies with these big negatives in there. I try to use a conservative model to get a good valuation, but it does make it really difficult. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. It peaked about $18, $19 two and a half years ago and did come down a lot at coronavirus, but came way back up. It's almost at its all time high. It can be risky looking at these numbers, but this is a really strong company, part of the S&P 500. I don't think they're going anywhere. And you have to understand stock price is not based off a company's financials. Financials help, but the stock price is based off a supply and demand of the market. So if investors really like a stock and they keep buying it, it will push the price higher and higher, even if the company is reporting bad financials. If investors think a stock is going to do poorly in the future, they'll sell the stock or they won't buy the stock and that keeps pushing the price lower and lower, even if the company is reporting good financials. The market's forward thinking, so you have to kind of understand the psychology of investors, which is a really hard thing to do. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a bad PE. The market median is 16.5. The average is 18.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is good. The median is 2.0. The average is 4.8. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.6. So investors are paying $1.60 for $1 revenue. Price to book is also really good. The median is 2.4, the average is 5.0. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.5. So investors are paying $2.50 for $1 book value. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. Not a good interest coverage ratio. The median is 4.1, the average is 14.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're only at 1.1. So they can just cover their interest payments with a little left over. ROE is not good either. The median is 12%, the average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're at negative 3% since they have negative net income. Current ratio is pretty good. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but 2.5 is fine. They can easily cover their current debts and payables. This is the only video I've done with the industry copper, so I have no other companies to compare them to. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 5% premium, although simply Wall Street has them trading at a significant discount. Their ratios look decent and their financials are a bit spotty. So let me know what you think of the video, leave a comment, I reply to all comments and become a member for as little as 99 cents up to $99. Thanks for watching.